speaker needs no introduction. We are so glad to have her with us. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, representing California's 12th district for 33 years. She's an extraordinary leader who's worked day in and day out fighting for families. Give it up for our speaker, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, I come here not just as speaker, but as I said to my caucus yesterday, I rise here as probably the person who changed the most diapers in the Congress of the United States, of my own children I'm talking about. <laughs> and it, it, with this, the understanding of the fact that care can't wait. Yeah. Moms and dads who have responsibilities at home know that when children are learning, parents can be earning. Yeah. Yeah. And that is what we, a path we have to be on. I want you to know how important you, all of this is to Fatima, to Kristen, to Igen, to all of you who, uh, all of you who are part of this outside mobilization. We can only do so much, so well, under, with our inside maneuvering. What you are doing on the outside, this very minute, and on, on the ongoing is really very important. Again, we can get our best result if you are VIPs, our volunteers in policy, sometimes in politics, but we're not talking politics today. You are VIPs. And this is something that we are so close on. Our three buckets for the children, jobs for jobs, lower cost, prescription drug costs, Tax cuts for the middle class by addressing our children with the tax child, the child tax credit. Doing all this by having it paid for by those who should be paying their fair share. Creating good paying jobs for our country. But for the children coming to near total coverage with expanding of, the, uh, expanding of Medicaid in the states that don't have it, strengthening the Affordable Care Act, expanding benefits for Medicare in the health bucket. In the climate bucket for the children, how many children should we be protecting from asthma and the rest, with clean air, clean water and the rest, this, to give them a planet, uh, passing it on in a worthy way for the children. And the children understand that. They know more about this than most of the members on the other side of the aisle in terms of what we have to do in climate. And that will be a major commitment that we will pass. And then the third, the care. Care can't wait. For me, all of these combined, but the care piece is the most transformative because it enables women to take their rightful place in the workplace, dads too, but again, the caregivers largely are moms or women. Whether it's a mom of a child or a, mom, a daughter of a mom who needs care, and it's not just about providing that care to free women to go to work. It's about respecting the caregivers. In my view, I want them, uh, uh, Jen, I want them to be unionized, but to respect their work, to give them the training, the pay, the recognition, the respect that they deserve. That is so essential to us, whether it's children or uh, in the child care, child care universal pre-K in that bucket or whether it's in the home care bucket or how they overlap. Very, very essential. And of course, I mean, it's a complete mystery to me how anybody can be opposed to paid family, parental, medical leave. Paid leave. What is it you don't get about that? You know, uh, last weekend I was at the G20, right before that the G7, the NATO on Monday. And when I explain to them what we're doing, they're like, you mean you don't have that already? Every developed country in the world respects what we need to do for our children, for our families, for our seniors, for people with disabilities, and the respect for the workers who provide that, as well as simple to understand paid family and medical leave. So with workforce development and recognizing the importance of housing and education and all of that in that bucket, uh, we're making the fight. And it will be the biggest 
biggest initiative we've ever passed in the Congress, dollars-wise and scope. We still have much more to be done. So we're just, uh, Joe Biden, God bless him, because he had this big vision with knowledge about the issues. He wrote the bills, strategic in terms of reaching out to people to help get their support, authentic in his commitment to this. And he's never going to stop until we get the full program. I myself mourn the fact that we don't have the 3.5, but even half of that is bigger than anything we've done before, and it would be a good first step, a good first step. So I thank all of you, uh, the Care Can't Wait Coalition that is here. Uh, uh, I mean, Kristen, uh, we've worked uh, with Moms Rising on so many of these issues individually over time. Thank you, thank you always, Kristen. And again, I, Den Pu, I mean, she has taught us so much about how we need to not only pay well and train well and respect well, but on how to get the job done. And um, uh, Fatima, thank you so much for your leadership. But all of you, um, Areka and uh, Senator Casey is going to be here, Fatima. So, so many of our colleagues who will be here. But understand this, we are united around the Care Can't Wait agenda. So I'm going to go there right now to continue the meetings, to get the job done, and the sooner the better, because Care Can't Wait, but our children can't wait either. So thank you all for what you do. Let's get the job done, and let's make, consider it a giant first step. Thank you all. Thank you. Let's get the job done. Care Can't